morning guys. We're here at the start of the second trail there. You know the back trail where most of the wolf snares are set where we haven't seen a wolf track in the, well not quite forever but pretty darn close. Um, on the road down here like we had some snow yesterday and on the way down here there was just wolves running everywhere. A couple lynx tracks um, right over there there's a again a couple otter tracks in that in of that creek there so fur's been moving around a little bit we'll see if it's moving into the snares and we got uh, the last the last day of martin season everything has to get pulled today so martin and fisher so i think i've got like four fisher sets in here still so not likely to catch anything but just get them traps out of there and see what else we can do hey guys we're in at the uh Second Fisher Martin set, whatever you want to call it. I just want to show you here. Even in these Belial 120s. Okay, you see, because I should show you that a little better. But this is what I walked up to. You see, I'm like, oh well, looks like I just sprung probably a squirrel in it. Female Martin went into the all the way into the box, went through that trigger and everything, and got caught on the way out. So, you know, and see, this is the one I threw in in a hurry last time because I didn't have a spare 160. Or not last time, the last time I caught something here. And I put the triggers just the way they basically have them from the factory. I didn't put them in that, you know, that circle that I like to use and bang he got one goes right through the trap and gets caught on the way out so it, even in a 120 those things can sneak through there anyways i'm gonna shut her down and not skunk today i've seen uh, so far on my line two links ran up and down the trail um obviously there to female and a male together because they're you know rolling all over in the snow and stuff like that playing doing whatever they do before mating and uh still not a wolf track but three martin tracks also i've seen and this isn't one of them although i did see one just back about 200 yards but there's no fresh tracks here this one's been caught a while so anyways cool got something for the bag hey guys i'm just back down the trail i Took that Martin out, pulled a couple of the wolf snares that are up here, and I'm right at that area where, uh, you know, I said the lynx were messing around, the, the two of them. But here, I've been gone like exactly 20 minutes, and here's one of the cats walking back right on my top of my skew trail. So. But it's just one by himself. It looks like the smaller one of the two, the female probably. But that's pretty cool. He's right close by guys I'm just over uh, almost where our deer camp was and first time for quite a while see here in the trail now this is a, a skidooer that came through here earlier this morning and I hit his trail way you know back close to the edge of my trap line and he went down a side trail that goes to my camp um, it was just a single skidooer but then while I was in off the side trail pulling some uh, traps and snares he came back already so I mean he's not more than a half an hour ahead of me but look here we got wolf tracks on the trail coming this way he's going that track there is pointed the way I just come from and these ones are pointed that way and he's running here so I just spooked him off the trail but he's alone lone wolf and uh, but like I said hey first time I've seen a wolf track in the, this area and this would be this would have been the fifth trip in a row I guess so got one at least left moved back into the area that you know that I'd uh, pushed them all out of 
and he's up that way. Lots of uh, lots of snares for him to get tangled up in if he goes off the main trail into the backside. Like I said, I don't keep on the main trail here through the bush. I don't put traps or wolf snares. I mean, I wish I could because there was a million pee post sets I could have made along here. But these sledders, you know, come in here all the time and, you know, I don't need a, a wolf caught in a, a foot trap sitting on the side of the trail you know, for everybody to whine and cry about, so just keep them off to the side. Alrighty. See down the trail. Hopefully he has come from the snares and that's where the rest of his pack is or else he's heading there later. I'm just uh, 200 yards up the trail from where that last transmission came from. And you see this, it's no longer a single wolf. It's a whole pack come out on the trail. There's some droppings right there. And an awesome spot for a, a peephole set. If I had them been smart enough to, well, I wasn't planning on getting, I was planning on pulling almost everything out of here, if not everything. But man, that just makes you want to have some foot traps, which is a, that would be an awesome spot. That's a, and this is the third peepo set I found in the last, or peepo spot in the last uh, 200 yards since I, I last talked to you. But that is just a deadly spot, a trap right there trap right there. But like I said, it's uh, right on the side of the Skidoo Trail and I don't really need, even if I had them, you know. They've been, well earlier in the year they were running this trail just non-stop and there was pee post sets everywhere. But uh, I just, like I said, didn't set them because of the sledders. So anyways, see down the trail. we got a, you know, a bucket fisher Martin set to pull out bunch of rabbit tracks around but here we got a uh, lynx tracks they're just a few days old you know heading off that way and right about over where you can see that spruce right over there just about 150 feet past that is uh, where I have a lynx set with the snare so hopefully he's heading that way but the the bad news is right over in the skidoo trail right there there's fresh fox tracks and you know you never want to see fox tracks coming from your lynx cubby where snares are set up anyways we'll uh, get this thing out of here and go see what's yes, on we're there. over here at the beaver house to check this trap i haven't been able to get to this one the last two trips because this whole bay here and this here whole area was just solid slush and I couldn't take the chance on stopping, so I'm gonna chop that thing out right now. I just wanna show you here, like you can see right there where the ice is caved in. That's uh, probably an entrance right there. I'll check it out with the chisel and, and see, but I'm gonna pull this trap out. And then if I, uh, you know, say March 1st or so, if I feel like coming in and setting a bunch of beaver traps, because this is the area I'll be doing it, I'll uh, at least know where the, there's an entrance right there. So, Anyhow, we'll uh, get this thing out of here and see if there's anything in it. Hey guys, so that trap wasn't sprung. I just want to show you. See, remember I said I'd check that to see if it's an entrance. Before I got any closer, I'm standing right on my skidoo trail. And you watch. There's zero ice. So I was obviously just outside of the channel with that uh, with that set. Holy smokes! That's, that's right where I'm traveling with the skidoo. But at least I'm moving and not standing still like I just was. I think we'll throw the stuff in the sleigh and boogie on down the trail. Hey guys, we're over at Wolf Lake. You know that one I call Wolf Lake. Um, that big beaver house here. I caught the beaver in the snare pole set. 
Now the wolves have been back here too, so they're they've been running around lots. You can see right there. They uh, got a pee post sent on a spruce bough that sticks out of the feed bed, and now they're just getting rude. Here's my trap hole, and uh, I decided to use it as a pee post. But anyways, I think next year when I, because this is about the third time. You know, a couple of times back when they were in here all the time, you know, where they've used that thing, they peed on it or right close by. I might just put some foot traps on it next year, but the only problem is the slush all the time, you know. Anyways, I'm going to get this beaver trap out of there and move on down the trail. Okay, guys, so I got this uh, big beaver in this other set. And well, I kind of figured since this one hadn't been checked in a couple trips too because of the slush. But it's a good sized one. It's been caught about a week. You can tell by the color of the nose. And the eyes will be gray too. You see, they're slightly turning gray. Now back when I was younger and sometimes I'd, you know, get into town and weather issues or whatever, it would make it so I couldn't uh, get out and check the traps for a little while. You know, I've had beaver into the, into the traps for as long as, well, three weeks I'd imagine. And you can always tell, I mean, they, they will last a long time underwater, under the ice. But you see the color of the nose here? They will go to a, an almost white before you start having issues. Now this one hasn't been caught that long because, you know, you can see that the water is, or the fur is pretty much waterlogged, but it's not too, too bad. But when you get a just a light gray like this, it's no problem. Then it, it goes to a bluish color. And after the bluish color comes white, and that's when you gotta stop and you know if there's medical reasons or whatever that you can't get out. And uh, they have to be in a long time. You know, just around the nose, pull on the fur, and uh, that's where it'll start coming off first. If you've got fur slip or hair slip, they call it. That means the skin is rotten and the, the hair roots have let go. Um, but, you know, 10 days like this is never a problem. That's under the ice, mind you. That's not in warm weather conditions. Alrighty, so I'll go get my trap setters and maybe we'll just drag the whole thing over there and take them out over there. Because this trap's not going back in until I uh, decide whether I'm going to come and trap some beavers later on. Alrighty. Now we're almost getting into the wolf snare area and you can see the wolf tracks have been all over this pond over here. Um, looks like maybe the otter have been climbing out of the right there again or else wolves were rubbing their face in it. Uh, I'm just not going over there that close to find out. So anyways, that's motor. A big big beaver. Yeah, I'm going to try and mount this camera on my head under my hoodie to see if it will stay there just so you can see what the back end of my line looks like. I uh, hope you can see this.
get a duck. Oh. Almost lost the camera, but not quite. And like we all know, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's the uh, slough part of the trap line through there. Well, it's all through here. It's all little ridges like this that were cut over. And little grassy sloughs in between them. So. Anyways, shut this camera off before I lose it in the snow like Andrew did. Hey guys, back at the truck. Um, I know I'd said I was going to pull all them wolf snares, but there's just too many of them running around today. So I uh, I pulled everything else, pulled the beaver sets until I see whether I'm going to go in there and uh, set up a bunch of houses. But I ended up setting a few more wolf sets. So I'm going to leave them for at least a week. And I will go in there and see what happens and then decide whether to pull them out or start setting some beaver traps. If the weather's going to stay warm, I'll start setting beaver traps pretty soon because you know, I think they call them for plus one in a couple days. But like today is just a incredibly gorgeous day. Even though I'm soaking wet because of the snow on the trees, but it's just doesn't matter, it's just warm outside, so but we'll get all this uh stuff out of the sleigh. Ended up with a beaver and a martin. Oh, and uh those wolves came through out onto uh the trail. Well just down. They walked one of them walked right up to the trail to one of my ram power snares. And stopped about five feet away from it and just you could see he was shuffling his feet around just staring at it he did not like that and he just ended up uh doing a 90 off the side of the trail and went around and came back out 50 feet on the other side of the trail or the trap trap ram you know what i mean but you know I, that's because they're you know they're running around right now in the middle of the daytime and those things stick out pretty good in the middle of the daytime. You know, they, uh, I think they need to make those things a little bit bigger. You know, if you added eight inches of length to those rams on each side, that'd give you an extra 16 inches. You could put an extra 12 inches of wire on that snare, and then you would have even more pressure on the end of the snare than you do now because you'd have that extra four inches of, of space. But what would be good is then you could have that... See, like right now, you that snare, it's so big. The, the wire is the exact length that it has to be to choke out a wolf. And it's, it makes exactly the right size loop. 
but what happens now is, let me see if I got one of those things. All right, well, anyways, here's the snare, and here's the, like, here's the ram, and here's the snare. It's right there touching. If you had an extra 12 inches of wire, which you can't have unless you make the snare bigger, or the, the ram bigger, obviously, because if you make 12 inches more of wire, the ram's going to open right up, and there's going to be no pressure on that snare. But you give an extra 16 inches, you can have 12 inches of wire. Let's see, 12 inches, whoop, about that much. And you could have that snare stuffed in the bush a little bit, hidden easier. The, the ram, I mean, the main part of the snare system. And then you could have 12 inches out where you start your loop. And I think that would work a lot better for them things not seeing those rams. But anyways, I think I'm going to call the company and maybe make a suggestion. Not that they'll listen to silly old me, but whatever. I'll give them the idea because I don't, I don't know that I'll uh, buy any more of the big rams other than for coyotes because that's what I can do with them right now for coyotes. Is you can have them because a the coyote snare is only, you know, eight inches or so, and the you know the wolf one's 12 to 14. So now you can make that snare smaller if you're using the wolf masters, and you've got a good foot of wire that you can have the snare set away from the body of the the system. So, anyways, we're gonna get this stuff unloaded and and then load up the sled and we'll get out of here. Alrighty. Keep your boots dry, hey? Hey guys, just on our way home and we've got three elk standing on the road. To right back where I parked the truck and went into the bush um, for the first mile or so there was a bunch of elk that had been all over the trail pawing in the ground feeding and stuff so that's only a few miles back. This seems to be an area I see lots of them here in the winter time. This uh, about a five mile stretch of the road here there's a lot of cottages in this area here and uh, I think the elk like to hang out close to the cottages. I don't know if it helps keep with the wolves keeping them away from them or what, but I'm on my way home. <laughs>